Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I will be sharing the processes and brewing of a Berliner Weisse. For those of you that aren't familiar with this style, I'll be giving some information as usual all about it before we go on with the recipe and the brew itself. The Berliner Weisse is what's classed as a sour beer. Sour beers are actually produced using bacteria which gives some very interesting and funky flavours to the resulting beer. The Berliner Weisse, and excuse my pronunciation if you're German, it's probably very off, is actually a very good entry-level sour beer for those that are unfamiliar. It just so happens to be very light and refreshing and pleasing to most people. This style was once upon a time brewed in over 700 breweries within Berlin. Napoleon was famously known to have referred to it as the Champagne of the North, so I guess he must have enjoyed it. Certainly its popularity has dropped since its heyday, but this style has been making a comeback thanks to the ever-growing craft beer industry. Today this style is brewed in many different countries and as you can see from this photograph in many different forms. Traditionally, the souring process for this style took a very long time and was also subject to triple decoction mashing, which is a very time-consuming way of doing things. Not to mention the fact that many people and myself believe that this is really unnecessary for the highly modified grain that brewers and breweries enjoy today. These beers certainly offer very interesting flavours and yet a low amount of alcohol. They are also very well known for having a low amount of hop bitterness or IBU. These days there are still die-hard traditionalist brewers of this style but also those that very much enjoy a faster souring method to produce what they feel is the same beer style. I am not going to argue that one way or the other here but I will be demonstrating and showing the fast souring method. I have had a great many requests from my viewers for this beer style and yet I have had very little experience of brewing this style myself. For this reason I have enlisted the help and assistance of a friend who is also working in the commercial beer industry who has given me guidance within the process and who was also present during the brew itself. So thank you very much to Shellover Vitudal for his expertise and help with this brew. So here's a quick look at my recipe for this particular brew and you will notice straight away that this is in terms of ingredients a very simple and cheap to make beer. I have copied the entire text of this to the YouTube video's description and you can also find this entire recipe on the Grainfather Recipe Tools database. Due to the continued popularity of this database you might find it easier to search for my name instead of the beer style name. Right, okay, so without further ado let's get on with the process. So as always we'll start with the mash in and you can see the grain crush that I'm using for this, very typical for what I tend to use. When adding the grain to your strike water, make sure that you try to distribute it around before you start stirring it up. This will help you get a nice even amount of grain across the whole mash tun. Uh, we've skipped forward a little bit here and now I'm showing you what it's like once I've added all of my grain. So you can see now that I'm starting to do different strokes with this mash paddle and really trying to break this grain up. We don't want any of this to compact in any way and we want to make sure that all of it is wet. Naturally the whole brewing process starts with the grain crush that you have and I can't stress enough that it's very very important to have that just right. One way of telling without even looking at the grain is if you're having awkward sparging, if you're finding that you're having lots of bits even clogging up your pump, 
then your grain is way too fine. If you're getting a bad efficiency, maybe your grain crush isn't fine enough. So we go on to the mash now, and this has a very, very typical cookie cutter mash schedule. This schedule is used in a lot of different beer styles because it's very nice and in the middle. So we start off with mash in and that's at 65 degrees C or 149 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll do this for 60 minutes. Then we'll mash out at 75 degrees C or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. This will last for 10 minutes. Next up we do the sparge as per normal. Nice and slow and nice and even. We want to make sure that we wash all of those sugars out because they will certainly assist in getting us to that starting gravity that we need. Now this is where this brew style now starts to change from what we're used to doing in making beers that aren't going to have a souring process. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to chill this beer down using our counterflow chiller to 46 degrees C or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Because you're only coming down from 75 degrees C down to 46, this should be a fast and uh, easy process. Next up, you will need a pH meter and you need to now record the amount of pH you have in your wort. It's highly recommended that you lower the pH of your wort to 4.5. To do this you simply add in small quantities at a time either lactic acid or phosphoric acid and this will have a very quick effect on the pH. Make sure you do stir it in but you don't really need to wait to see the results. Once the pH is at the correct level, it's now time to move on to the next step. So as you can see now, what we're doing is we're adding grain to our wall. Apparently the grain that is most suited to this process is actually Pilsner. So that's what we've added here. You will note that this was basically just a fistful of the grain and also it isn't crushed in any way. Some people actually use yogurt for this. Just make sure that on the carton it says that it contains lactobacillus. The next step, as you can see here, is to actually add one or two layers of cling film. Now the important thing here is that we want to make sure that this does not oxidize. So we're doing it basically to keep oxygen out. So make sure that you have a nice seal around the whole thing when you're laying this down. And here's how it should look once it's all finished. During this souring process you need to maintain that temperature of 46 degrees C or in Imperial, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And now the souring process starts. Usually this will take between 24 to 36 hours to complete. During this process I covered the lid over with a towel in this way that you can see here. You now want to check periodically the pH level of your wort. Once the pH has reached between 3.4 to 3.6, it's then time to start the next stage of the process. It's very important to keep an eye on this uh, pH during the whole process, because if you miss this window, it's not going to be suitable. I ended up actually doing the final stage of this brew at 11 o'clock at night. I wouldn't say that that was particularly convenient, but the next stage is rather fast. Okay, so what we do next is we of course remove all of that cling film and we start bringing our grain father up to the boil. As you can see from this photo, there's an awful lot of foam at the top of this wall. That's basically because this is a high protein grist. As I approached boiling temperature, this protein on top really started to increase. It's also worth mentioning that this brew, because it's in its individual phases uh, and because of the nature of everything you're doing, there's really no benefit from using the um, 
Grandfather Connect controller app. So I did everything manually and I used a timer just like this one to do that. It was like taking a trip down memory lane in the days when we didn't have all of these gadgets and everything to help us with our brewing. So here we are now and we're almost at the boil point. In advance I prepared my hop addition with Irish moss and yeast nutrient as you can see here. So now the boil has actually begun, I've actually started to clear the head of all of this protein that's on top. It didn't actually take too long. Once this was fairly clear I set my timer here for 15 minutes and then I started to stir in this mixture of hops, yeast nutrient and Irish moss. I found that actually it was quite hard to stir this all in so in the end I actually had to do a miniature whirlpool just to get it all to go down to the bottom. Well, I guess that's just the amount of protein that's involved in this and the change of pH. Because we have such a high protein grist here, it's very important to regularly scrape the bottom plate. Now, okay, this is only a 15 minute boil, but I did it a couple of times during this whole time. So just a 15 minute boil and then it was time to let the counter flow chiller take over and transfer it into my fermenter. As usual this certainly didn't take very long and then it was happily inside my new conical fermenter. So here's a quick resume on the entire process. For your convenience I will add this also to the YouTube description. So that just about wraps this one up. As I mentioned earlier, this video was the direct result of quite a few of your requests to do a brew video of this style. So please, if any of you out there have anything else that you'd like me to do, just let me know. If it's popular enough, I'll certainly do it. I actually really enjoyed this brew. It's not something that I would usually do, to be quite honest, but it was certainly a lot of fun. And having a beer that's done in stages like this makes it a really nice little project that you can get your teeth stuck into. So I hope that you all found this both enjoyable and interesting. And again, thank you very much to Shellover for his kind assistance in this brew. So if you did like this video then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video or in others or anything to do with brewing in general then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!